Hey, what's up, everybody? Rob Cohey here. Welcome to part eight of this series, the much anticipated video on joints. So joints, I jokingly ask the team, maybe we should consider renaming it to where the hell are my mates? Um, <laughs> we, um, joints are how you build relationships between components in Fusion. Um, and we'll use the example, the gears here, um, to introduce you to joints. Everybody wants to see the gears move. So let's just, let's just start with that. Okay. So, um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to insert a standard component and the active command when you insert is the move or copy command, right? And this first move is what we call free. The first move is free. It won't, um, represent a, a new position in your timeline. This is just positioning it in space. So if I turn it so that I don't so, so I don't have to do as much rotation when I'm placing the joint, that's that's an advantage. But when you have the joint command active, what your cursor is communicating with you, right? There you see all these little white glyphs on the screen here, and basically what that's saying is, is hey, that that's a piece of geometry that I can use to position this component, right? And and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the edge, the circular edge of this, and the circular face of the um, the back plate there and say, hey, I, I, want, I want you to position here. And you saw the model go crazy. It did this little truffle shuffle, right? <laughs> but what that's telling me is, is hey, the, the, the joint type that's active is um, a rigid joint. And there's all kinds of different joint types and we're not, we don't have time in six minutes to go through all of them. But the ones we're gonna go through are rigid and uh, revolute joint. Now this one, it's a, it's a shaft that's gonna hold the drive gear. So obviously I want it to rotate. So I'll say revolute joint, and that's the relationship that I want. So the joint both positioned the component as well as determined its motion. Okay, one command, two different things. This next one, I'm going to place um, this, this key in here. And rather than using revolute, I'm just going to use a rigid, right? So again, when you insert your, your component, the active component is move. I'm going to invoke the joint command. And again, I'm getting feedback right at the cursor here. And you can say, oh, well, right, it found the middle of that face for me. Well, that's pretty cool because where it needs to go has an equivalent piece of geometry. So I'll say, yeah, yeah middle of that face, middle of that face, and rigid joint type, I hit OK. Now, I don't have to additionally tell that key to follow the shaft. It'll just, it'll, it'll go where the shaft goes. In the event that I animate the model, not animate the joint. Animate the joint will just give you a little preview and it'll only spin um, the shaft there. But if I say animate the model, it grabs the relationships relative to that animation and it you can see it takes the key with it, okay? So let's go ahead and grab the drive gear. I'll insert it in and again, the, the active command when you insert a component is the move and copy command. Um, but in this case, it's just a move, obviously. So I'm just going to move it out where I need it to be. So it's easier for me to select the geometry um, that will determine its position. I wouldn't rely on the move command. And I'm saying I wouldn't. What I really mean is don't rely on the move command to position your components. Use the joint command to position the components relative to each other in space. The move command is not for that purpose, okay? Um, so in this example, again, I was able to put um, a rigid joint there, and now that gear is, is, is put in place um, as well as its relationship to other components. So I'll go ahead and bring in the, uh, the driven gear in here, and same type of thing, I'm gonna use the end of that shaft to center up with the back face of the back plate, does a little truffle shuffle. And rather than um, having it match exactly on that face, I'm going to get a little bit of an offset, one mil offset. It's a revolute joint. And you're already starting to see this thing move around. Well, obviously, if, it, if you're just animating the one, um, the one joint type, it's not going to turn the other one. You have to build some sort of relationship. And it's really super easy to do. So here I'm going to say, uh, down the assemble, pull down. I'm going to establish what's called a motion link. Now this is this is the, a little bit of the confusing part is you're going to establish a motion link between the joints, not the components. Okay, 
So you find the joints that you want, and rather than them grinding gears, you just say, hey, reverse the direction here, build that relationship, and there we go. It really is that easy. Um, one of the things I found with people using the joints uh, as opposed to constraints or mates or something like that is we're kind of overthinking it um, a little bit. There's a lot of intelligence built into um, the command and right at the cursor. So take the time to learn the feedback that your cursor is giving you. Um, and I think you'll have a lot better, um, a lot better results um, experience with, uh, with utilizing joints. Here, um, I set the opacity level of the, of the main body so that I can see through it while it's animating. You can have a lot of fun with this, guys, <laughs> um, if you want you, you know, to really build the relationships uh, with your components. I, I didn't have to do a Revolute joint. I could have done a Rigid if I didn't want to animate it, but I wanted to animate it because it's cool. All right, we'll see you next time.